Is it working? Um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us for the last uh, session of the day, I guess. Um, this talk uh, is about high availability in OpenStack. Yes, I know. Well, one more high availability talk. Uh, and Florian said everything, so we basically don't have anything to say anymore, I guess. <laughs> so, well, uh, actually, just like, yes, we have. Oh, we do. OK. Yes. OK, so, well, we'll see. Uh, no, just kidding. It's just like, um, I think our talks are complementary, so this should be fine. Thanks for uh, setting the scene then. So let's move ahead uh, with our talk. Um, I'm Sebastian and I work for Innovance um, as a cloud engineer in Paris. Uh, I'm a DevOps and uh, I love Ceph and OpenStack, of course. Um, I work for the integration team with Emilia and uh, what we do is we basically build, design, uh, and deploy really clever platforms uh, for OpenStack. So enough about me. Just uh, give the floor to Emilia. Yep. So uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, so we are working for Innovance, like you said. Uh, Innovance is a um, um, cloud provider, and also um, we are uh, designing and building cloud for customers. Uh, I'm like uh, Sebastian, I'm working on uh, deployments as a DevOps, and uh, I am involved in the community since uh, one year and a half as a contributor in the documentation. Uh, and also, um, I am interested in quantum deployments. Uh, I'm not a developer, uh, and that's that's all we can yeah, continue. I think it is. Yeah, we can move ahead with the agenda for today. So today we are going to introduce the topic by our contribution related to uh, eight availability in OpenStack. Um, after that, uh, we will uh, share with you our experiences uh, that we uh, had uh, in uh, at Innovens uh, to two uh, uh, use cases. And uh, finally, uh, we will look further uh, as a conclusion uh, for the future uh, of HR in OpenStack. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. OK, so a little bit of our, about our contributions uh, within OpenStack. Um, eight months ago, we uh, started a project with like, St Stixo guys um, about the OpenStack resource agents. Uh, back then, um, we just thought that OpenStack wasn't, well, built for HA, and we had to bring HA for OpenStack. So nowadays things change a little bit, uh, but we had to make decisions, and so this is why we started with uh, high availability stacks, uh, Pacemaker, Corusync, um, these kind of layers. Um, so we basically wrote all the resource agent for every services and even stateless services, uh, even if maybe uh, today it doesn't make any sense anymore, but well, it's like this. Uh, so we have um, resource agents available for Essex, Folsom, Grizzly, and quite recently we opened a new branch, the master branch with the Avana support, uh, because uh, as OpenStack gets more uh, mature, we, uh, we always have to add new services, so we have to build resource agent. And future, no future, because, well, OpenStack open tends to be uh, a little bit more HA aware with, with uh, such things like, for example, RabbitMQ with the Marowit queues. So let's move with the documentation now, the yep. things we made. So, um, as Florian said before, uh, we actually missed some uh, documentation uh, at the beginning, and uh, he started the work, and I, I continue, I continue to, to improve the documentation for uh, explain to the community how to build HR uh, using uh, all resource agencies for uh, Pacemaker. And uh, now the work is still in progress for active-passive mode, and uh, the, um, the next step for me and for all people who want to, uh, to contribute in the documentation is to, to uh, write a new git for active active mode, how to deploy uh, OpenStack uh, for large scale cloud 
and uh, how to to make uh, OpenStack active active uh, for scheduler and APIs and uh, uh, other components of OpenStack. Um, we so we need contributors. If you have any feedbacks in your company, if you have any feedback from deployments, uh, of course uh, it's a pleasure to to welcome new new contributors. Okay, uh, so. We use Puppet to deploy uh, all our setups, uh, ours or customers' setup. Um, and of course, it's deployed in a fashion way, uh, in, let me do it again, in an HA way. Um, so we recently added the support for HA proxy for the stateless services and also some flags to uh, enable the Marowit queue. So, um, Every development we made are available upstream for uh, in the Puppet Lab repositories. Yeah, some work is under review by Puppet Labs. Yep. yep. So now about uh, our experiences. Uh, it's what we made and what we are still doing, of course. Uh, in this second section, what we try to explain is uh, to expose two architecture reference references yep. for, for OpenStack. So we're going to start with a kind of hold one um, with an active passive mode. And the new one will be more a little bit active active uh, with load balancing and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. <clears throat> so uh, maybe as you know, uh, Innovance has a public cloud. Uh, actually, Innovance has two public cloud, one in France, in Paris, and another one in Canada uh, recently uh, uh, my team has set up a public cloud in Montreal. Uh, we, we have deployed Folsom release, um, and we designed the, the HR uh, with, uh, in, in the active passive mode. So next slide, please, thanks. So this is uh, our architecture. We have, uh, so we are using uh, OpenStack on Debian, uh, we have uh, we, we have uh, the packager uh, working for Innovance and also uh, publish the package on Debian. We are using puppets. Um, the thing that uh, the thing that um, for for some release uh, the puppet modules was not ready for HR, so uh, we had to to use a pacemaker and uh, and uh, uh, well, DRBD so stack. As well. yep. RabbitMQ wasn't ready yeah. and. The setup wasn't that big, so we had to take yeah. decisions, and we ended up with uh, just a pacemaker stack. Uh, it's the same for MySQL, so mm. it made sense to use. That's two why nodes. we have we have two controllers. We have one uh, in uh, in active mode, um, <clears throat> which is performing all the API services, schedulers, uh, MySQL, and um, and RabbitMQ, and the other one is. Uh, uh, actually waiting for that the, the active is uh, failing down. So um, we, uh, for, for the compute node, we don't uh, provide uh, high availability for now. And uh, for storage, uh, uh, at this time, we are, uh, we are using, uh, we are using, uh, we, we are not providing uh, block storage as a service. And uh, Sebastian is going to, to work on uh, deployment of Ceph. Maybe you want to? Yeah, well, uh, the coming month, we will uh, provide a, a new feature in our cloud. So just, just the block device as a service. So you can either attach block devices and also boot from volume. And it will be backed by Ceph. So, so Glance will be as well part of the setup. So Ceph will also back uh, Glance. And uh, well, that's, maybe you uh, can talk about Ceph one well, minute. Well, yeah, I don't okay. know. Yeah, of course. Uh, who knows a little bit about Ceph, maybe, already? Yeah, that's not true. <laughs> you. OK, uh, for those of you who don't know uh, what Ceph is, it's a unified storage platform that can provide either well, object store, block storage, and uh, distributed file system. So it's roughly and really quickly, it's uh, what Ceph does. In the block storage side, there is a kernel module. And there is also a QMU driver, so this is the one we use within OpenStack. Okay, thanks. So uh, our feedback uh, about uh, this kind of architecture, uh, 
um, the positive feedback is that we uh, didn't lose time to to uh, to make new modules for puppets because we actually used the the, the upstream modules we have we, we did some contribution to um, for the um, for the stack of uh, pacemaker resource agent we use uh, uh, the one that we did with Aztexo and Sebastian and um, so the negative p feedback was uh, that we cannot scale uh, with uh, this kind of architecture we use active passive mode so if we had we, if we want to scale out uh, the controller it's not possible as you know um, we had also uh, DRBD issues. Uh, it's, not, it's not really an issue, but well, as soon as we can get rid of the RBD for setups, it's not like, well, everyone knows the overhead that it uh, generates. So, well, if we can build a setup without it, that's better. And what, what, what we are going to, to move uh, very soon, it's, uh, we are going to upgrade to Grizzly uh, release um, and uh, also to, uh, oh, you changed the oh slide. No, it's already my fault. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we are going to, to scale out the controller and to, to build a new architecture with active active mode. Uh, actually, the same kind of architecture uh, that Sebastian is going to, to show you. Uh, so this is the CloudWord project. So CloudWord is one of uh, our customers, and uh, we well, the main goal of CloudWord is to build uh, the biggest uh, cloud, in, at least in France and well, maybe in Europe. Um, yeah. So Innovance has been chosen to build this infrastructure. So this is why we are working on that. Um, the setup at I'm going to show you is not in production yet. It's something that we are working on, uh, but it's definitely the setup that's going to be in production. So no worries there. Um, for stateless services, like all the APIs, we use HAProxy. So um, every API request our load balance through this HAProxy node, HAProxy are nodes are redundant, so we have two. We use uh, keep alive D with a virtual with a floating IP. One IP at a time is available in one node, and we also perform some passive checks on the API. So if the API doesn't respond, we just don't route the, tra route the traffic on this node. Uh, it's the same for HAProxy. If HAProxy doesn't respond, we just move the floating IP on the other side, so we don't have any downtime thanks to this. Well, uh, we have uh, API clusters. It's more uh, logical infrastructure because, of course, schedulers are part of the same machines as all the APIs, Keystone, Glance, uh, Nova APIs. Um, on the MySQL side, uh, we decided to uh, use Galera. So, well, the setup is quite easy. We have three nodes uh, in cluster mode and uh, our HA proxy load balance all the requests. Uh, from one database server to another. So this makes the setup quite highly available. On the RabbitMQ side, we have two dedicated nodes uh, with the built-in clustering mode of RabbitMQ, and we enabled, thanks to Grizzly, uh, the new Marit Q feature uh, and uh, XHA policy. About the computes, well, we use uh, a distributed file system for all the um, Nova instances, so this makes all the VMs highly available. And uh, we have a really uh, nice NFS cluster based on a NetApp array, so we also use this one with the Cinder driver to attach block devices. I haven't spoke about uh, Horizon, uh, just simply because we don't use it. Uh, they have their own application to connect to the API, but uh, if you want to scale, or if you want how to scale Horizon, um, I think that the easiest way to do it is just simply to build nodes with uh, Horizon, Apache, and uh, one uh, memcached instance. So you can just scale out like this, and you use a router, well, a load balancer like LVS, and uh, with IP routing, you don't lose your session. So well, even if you eat the same memcache cache, it's perfectly fine. So. This is how you can scale Horizon if you want. And uh, this is pretty much it for this infrastructure. 
we forgot to mention that if we, if you had any questions, just right away after the picture, you could ask this question. So maybe we can go back to the previous slides if anyone has any questions about or feedback from from your deployments. Sorry, I'm sure you have yeah. feedbacks. Yes. So if someone in the audience has any question about the setup that Emilian exposed, uh, we can just go back or wait for the session. But do you have any questions? You do, okay, so let's move back to this one. Yeah. Um, no, well, actually, was for a Mine. Puppet module oh. that you just mentioned. Is it on Forge, or where is that? I couldn't, uh, I couldn't get, quite get where, where are you contributing the modules? And, and you sharing the modules, Puppet modules? Yeah, they are available on the Forge for Puppet Lab. Uh, so on Forge. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You mentioned for scaling Horizon using LVS instead of AJ Proxy. Any reason you're not using? Oh no. Well, uh, oh, just okay. just a little bit of so that oh. that support uh, sessions basically. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so just that. Well, I tend to use LVS, but well, you can also use uh, AJ Proxy. It's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. Any more questions on? Well, let's move ahead then. Okay, uh, some feedback around, well, it's not really feedback because it's not in production yet, but uh, it's still something uh, that we thought about. Um, the infrastructure is highly flexible, uh, highly scalable. Uh, this infrastructure uh, makes maintenance easier because we can basically shut down one node from DHA proxy and upgrade this node, and well, that's quite flexible for a <coughs> upgrade intervention, maintenance, kernel update. Whatever. Uh, I will let Emilia speak about the networking. Yeah, thanks. Um, about uh, about quantum uh, like networking in OpenStack, uh, we have new features in Grizzly, uh, which able to scale out uh, quantum L3 and uh, DHCP agents, but we don't still have uh, HR for those components. Uh, that means that if we have the uh, virtual router hosted on the L3 node. If we lose the node, um, uh, the, um, the tenant lose uh, all the router on, on this node. That's why we, we don't still have uh, the HR. And um, if, if you want to get HR from uh, quantum L3 agent uh, and DHCP, you need to, to use uh, our resource agents uh, for now. And uh, we hope that in Havana we will have a uh, the same feature like we have with uh, Nova Network, uh, the multi-host feature, which able to, to have uh, each compute as a, as a L3 agent. And uh, the, other, the other issue that we, we have, uh, it's about scaling uh, uh, the OpenVSwitch plugin in Quantum, uh, because we, uh, maybe as you know, uh, how many people here was is working with quantum software? Yeah, because it doesn't work. Just use Nova Network. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, quantum today is supporting two kind of isolation with uh, Open vSwitch plugin. So we have we can use uh, VLAN or GRE. And uh, as you know, VLAN cannot scale. Uh, Upon uh, five uh, five thousand uh, networks, and uh, um, GRE uh, doesn't scale uh, because of um, uh, compute uh, co compute uh, processors. Uh, yeah, the overhead. You yeah, overhead. So yeah. we, we today we, we cannot scale uh, uh, in a big infrastructure with uh, the OBS plugin in in Quantum. And if you want to 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 build. Um, um, high developable infrastructure, uh, 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 full stack in high available infrastructure with quantum and for your networking, you need to buy a uh, uh, SDN solution and to, to set up uh, the plugin with quantum and make it working. VXLAN might be a solution or not? It's so an option? VXLAN. Yeah. Yeah, but VXLAN is not supported yet uh, in the plugin. And oh. it's actually, uh, there had a discussion yesterday with uh, Edouard Tullo from CloudWatt about uh, introducing new features in the quantum plugin uh, to, to be able to, 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 to scale out uh, uh, the, the agent and to, to scale out the infrastructure, the isolation uh, protocols and so 
so so on. And at this time, uh, I can continue. At this time, we are testing the Nova cells to, uh, actually this is a, a new features in Grizzly, uh, which able to, to, uh, make, to build cells in your cloud in which you have uh, um, uh, Nova features, only Nova features, and uh, uh, who, uh, which are talking to the, to the, to the, with the RabbitMQ to uh, its parent cell, and it, uh, it's able you to scale uh, your Nova infrastructure, but not Cinder, not Quantum. So it's a way to segmentate, isolate yeah. logically your infrastructure uh, to maybe make upgrades easier or increase your scalability. Yeah. Uh, speaking about that, um, we just thought it's just uh, assumptions and things we discussed while building infra this infrastructure because uh, the, the main goal is to go with uh, thousands and thousands of compute nodes. So we just have to, to think a little bit further um, about hyperscaling considerations. Uh, we can't really build uh, just a horizontal uh, infrastructure, so we should maybe uh, try to segmentate uh, through domain failure and build like tiny, tiny clouds. Uh, it's just what we think. It haven't said that it has to be uh, like this, but well, uh, would be nice things, for example, with the Nova cells to segment it, everything and uh, try to isol isolate as much as you can and build really tiny clouds cl next to each other. So that's, um, that's just an idea to um, to make upgrade easier and uh, things like that. Newcomers? Yeah, <clears throat> in, in the Grizzly release and in also in, uh, in the next release of Havana, we, uh, we have a new component in OpenStack. We have, uh, the first one is Nova Conductor, um, which allows us to, um, uh, Nova Compute doesn't steal anymore uh, uh, the DB access, the database, database access from compute nodes. Uh, and uh, these services uh, can be scale, scaled by uh, horizontally. So uh, in our cluster, we, we, we didn't write any resource agent for pacemaker. We only uh, put it in the cluster and uh, run uh, multiple uh, Nova conductor nodes. Um, but there is still uh, services in OpenStack in which you cannot uh, uh, run uh, in the multiple time um, like uh, Cellometer yeah, uh, central agent central for agent. people using Cellometer. Uh, and we have uh, new services in uh, OpenStack networking. We have uh, the load balancing as a service, uh, which has uh, an agent. And also the, um, the metadata service, uh, which has an agent too, working with L3 node. And that's this kind of service that you cannot run uh, HR with uh, multiple run. You need uh, standard cluster with pacemaker and uh, chorosync. And uh, we- So you might always need yeah. nodes that can so run we, pacemaker. So we worked the uh, resource agent and uh, you can download them and try uh, to, to- It's part to of the Avana yeah. branch, the master branch yeah. on uh, the Git repository. So well, feel, feel free to test it and well, return some feedback. Yeah. And the documentation for it is coming uh, in the mm -hmm. few in the few weeks. Yeah. So that's pretty much it for today. We would like to thank you for your kind attention. And if you have any questions, you can well feel free to ask questions. And yeah, this is French. Yeah. Um, you after. Oh, first of all, yeah. For, for the network node, you mean that L3 and DHCP server? So, <clears throat> actually the better thing to do uh, today is uh, to, to set up um, multiple layer 3 and uh, DHCP agents. So you have uh, now a scheduler in quantum. So you, if, you, if you need to, to scale out uh, your cloud, you can, you can build uh, 10 nodes for layer 3. 
but you need to be aware that if you lose one node, you will, lo you will lose uh, all the rotor or steel nodes of this node. So that's something you, you should be aware. Uh, if you don't want to scale out uh, uh, the networking part in OpenStack, you can run the old architecture with uh, active-passive mode. That's, that's uh, an answer? Yes. Okay, nice. Yeah, sorry, you after? Please, yeah. Do you have any redundancy on the network card? Come again, sorry. You need, uh, what? For example, the network interface, mm -hmm. you have any redundancy in that? Like, do you use mixed team? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, obviously. Oh, uh, team, yeah, yeah. We use bonding for <coughs> yeah. this. What? Okay, is, is that information, do you have that in bonding or yes, or in, in the actual virtual machine? Oh, oh, okay, I see the question. Um, for all compute nodes, we have, uh, so we have, uh, we have several kinds of network. We have the public network, we have the management network, and we have the uh, v VM network, inter-VM network. And all the network use not one network card. We, yeah. we, we use at least two network cards for each network. Yes, that's what uh, we how did. How has changed, or how are you closer to, say, pulling from source from OpenStack, from, or how are you um, getting more monitoring information to determine uh, better operations procedure? What are, what are you doing to make the life of an operator easier? <coughs> well, it's our, our priority is yeah, to, to, to okay. upgrade the to, to upgrade our infrastructure and also to to contribute to the greasy module in Puppet. You, you work on Puppet may, uh, maybe, and you know that uh, all the Puppet modules are not uh, ready for uh, greasy release. So we are working on that to make uh, deployment uh, faster and uh, easier. Um, in the past, uh, we uh, didn't deploy all the infrastructure with Puppet. And now, at this time, we are, we are uh, working on that uh, uh, to, to make all the infrastructure um, in, uh, ab able to be installed with Puppet in 100%. So if we need a full uh, HR stack, uh, we just uh, Puppet apply and it's working. Yeah, well, internally, we also use a continuous integration system. So everything we made has been integrated into the Jenskins and we run it and, well, we can just be sure that everything works. Any more questions? No. Well, thank you very much, everybody, then. Uh, the slides will be soon available. Yep, on the slideshow of Innovance and, and also on the OpenStack uh, website. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Have a nice day.